Hey, hey, everybody! It's time once again for another figure arts review. And this time, it's a doozy. In the past couple of reviews, I've mentioned the unofficial Sentai Akiba Rangers. Yes, that's their full name. And I'm focusing on none other than that three-member team. Does an official product of an unofficial Sentai keep the bar as high as other figures? Let's find out. Here we have Akiba Yellow, Akiba Blue, and its leader, so to speak, Akiba Red, nestled in the standard Super Sentai Figure Arts packaging. For the release of this team, Bandai opted for a stylized box with bright colors and all sorts of stars enrobing the package. Even the card piece on the inside is different. Instead of the usual blank silver card, this time we get the Akiba Ranger logo added to it. It's all incredibly eye-catching and a throwback to the very first Sentai of the 1970s, Go Ranger. See the influence? I want to point out that the blue and yellow figures in this review are the Season 2 versions, and red is Season 1. But more on that later, as you'll find out. Since most Sentai team's costumes solely consist of colored spandex, there usually isn't too much in terms of sculpting on the figures. But for the Akiba Rangers, their outfits are more akin to battle armor, and a lot of sculpting is put into these guys, as opposed to the standard figure. Take a gander at Yellow and Blue's legs. They have what appears to be leggings and a garter belt getup going on there, respectively. And the helmets! Helmets are always a big selling point for me, and they never disappoint. This team's helmets are designed to resemble hairstyles, and it definitely shows in the buns, ponytail, and spiked windswept look. Even the soles of their boots are etched with detail. I always love me a figure that has sculpting to the underside of their feet. A cool feature added to each ranger comes in their chest armor. If you take a close look, Closer... Closer! There. You can make out they have what almost looks like cyborg pieces consisting of a silver mechanical breastplate covered by a translucent colored plate on top to give it a neat cyber feel to it. Here's something I didn't pick up on until fully analyzing these figures. The armor on their backs have these two holes. Not only do they function as part of the sculpt, but also as plug-in points for the Stage Act 4 stands. Meaning, when using them, I don't have to worry about the waist clips getting in the way because they fit perfectly in their backs! SCORE! Each ranger's costume includes a scarf which dangles from their shoulders. Just another in the countless number of references to other Sentai series. This show was meant for adult Super Sentai fanboys, after all. All three figures come with two interchangeable scarves. One to rest in place, and one to look like it's blowing in the wind! When you want to situate them in dramatic action poses. Speaking of posing, the articulation breakdown is no different than any other standard Sentai figure arts. With fluid movement in the neck, shoulders, double elbows, ball wrists, abs and waist, funky hips, double knees, ankles and toes. While we're down there, let me point out something with yellow as I try not to look like a total perv. If you lift the back of her skirt flap, you'll see kanji on her tushy! It's another part of the show and long-running gag which was added. And I'm sure if it wasn't added, someone would cry foul. Wait, wait, wait! Go back to Red! No. Does... Does he have bicep articulation? Oh my god, it is! Oh, look at it! Marvel in it! Be amazed by it! Because my other figures sure don't have it! Oh, and as it turns out, Yellow's buns are posable as well. Cool. The trio wouldn't be complete without accessories, right? Between all three of them, there are a bunch. True to form, there are a lot of hands included, all of which enable you to reenact character-oriented poses. Take Akiba Yellow, the bubbly cosplay addict. 
her hands help exude that personality. Or Akiba Blue, who in this Season 2 edition is replaced by a wannabe pop idol. The hands she comes with give her the ability to make all of those idol gestures many of us outside of Japan just don't quite understand. And Akiba Red, the spastic Super Sentai aficionado, comes with a pair to let him make the large, sweeping, heroic movements he's so hung up on. If there were ever a team that needed all of these, it's the Akiba Rangers hands down. Or up! A true testament to the wonders of figure arts. Okay, so we have all the hands covered. But Baron, what about the weapons? Glad you asked. Each Ranger's transformation device and primary weapon is this, the Moe Moe Zukun. It looks just as it appears on the show and packed with sculpted detail. Though not heavy on color, it is painted in a nice-looking navy blue gunmetal with hints of gold. While Akiba Red only comes packaged with it in collapsed gun mode, blue and yellow include an opened mode version, resembling a blue-haired anime girl. Long story. Which, when shaken up and down, like that, transforms them into the Akiba Rangers. It's an impressive little piece, and a shame the first version of Red didn't include one. Remember in past reviews when I mentioned other figure arts receiving packin' weapons they give to the Akiba Rangers in the show? This is why I went with the Season 2 versions of Blue and Yellow. Aside from featuring different hair sculpts on their helmets when compared to their first season releases, Bandai went ahead and packed in these type of weapons with the girls, instead of divvying them up to the Ranger figures who supply them in the show. Akiba Yellow comes with Die Ranger's Die Bomber, why Blue has the Jew Ranger, Jew Rain Butler, and Hurricane's Hurricane Ball. Keep in mind, these weapons were made up for the series and never actually used in the shows by the Rangers who supply them. These things are bright, gimmicky, wonderfully sculpted, and only add to the sheer awesomeness of the Akiba Rangers. The Die Bomber is a goofy-looking literal hand cannon. The figure can use it as a single cannon or split it in half as two. The core Die Ranger colors are all represented, and even their team insignia is sculpted in. The Jew Rain Buckler is basically an oversized version of the Dino Buckler the Jew Rangers transform with, and even the three figures can wear it by clipping the two pegs on each side of the hinged panels to the holes on the figure's waist. I didn't notice this until I took a second look at it, but the side panels feature the same diamond motif found on the Jew Ranger costumes. A nice touch I never expected. Then we get to the Hurricane Ball, which is a cool looking ball and chain weapon with a real metal chain. You can never go wrong with a real metal chain. Like the other weapons, the ball has the corresponding team insignia, as well as all the colors of the Hurricangers. These weapons are cool on their own, but you know what would be great? If they all combined, that would be the bee's knees. Guess what? They do! Like any good Super Sentai series with gimmicky weapons, they all join together to form a giant super weapon. In this case, the Dai Sorita Bazooka! So, to create this behemoth, first we have to detach the chain from the Hurricane Ball. With that out of the way, let's start plugging! The buckler goes into the slotted hole on the ball, and the side hinges clasp onto the side. Then the combined ball and buckler attached to the peg formed from the two bomber pieces together, and the chain we pulled apart earlier goes into the holes on the back of the die bomber. Pretty garish and gnarly, right? Well, that's the point. And this is only half of an even larger cannon! But to acquire those accessories, I'd have to get the three other figures they came packed with, all of which I currently do not own. When I began watching Akiba Ranger, 
I was initially off-put by the change in costume design when compared to their official Sentai brethren, and never thought I'd want their figure arts representation in my collection. Though after the first season, I was hooked, and seeing how it pulled from the long history of Super Sentai to add to the depth of the show, my opinions quickly changed. This simple three-man team is a great addition to my shelf, and given the other figures I have, they have plenty of members to gush over, just like I do over them.